uh, this morning. I want to uh, say some uh, word of faith this morning that some of you are sitting here watching and listening this morning. Uh, God knows he knew what you're going through in life. He know the hardship, he know the difficulties that you're facing. And, and, and I want to share this to you to say this word to confirm that God, he understands. He knows what you're going through in life. And he knows how to deal with your life and my life. And he loves you. He never will leave you nor forsake you this morning. And I want to, uh, and um, all the families of uh, the, ch the wonderful church that I belong to now, and the ministry of gift care in which uh, me and my wife are managing, I want to send all their greetings to you and my family to thank you for wonderful support that you're supporting us in prayer and in uh, finance. Thank you so much. Uh, it really means so much to us this morning. Thank you, uh, Rendini and, uh, and uh, Pastor Elisa for the wonderful platform that you have provided. Uh, we believe that God will enlarge you and your ministry uh, from now onwards. And all the apostles, David and uh, Snyder, thank you for being faithful. And everyone who is uh, uh, on this uh, live telecast, who has been used by God with maybe other ministries. I want to, to tell you today that you are doing a great job. Well done. And please continue the very wonderful work, the only work that God, when he looks down from heaven, he is watching his people preaching and teaching his word this morning. Hallelujah. Well, this morning, we will uh, continue from where I stopped last week. Last week. Wow. I'm way back. Just yesterday. Uh, just yesterday. And um, we're touching about the topic on worship. Um, you see, last night and even early this morning when I was pondering on what we're going through yesterday, you know, there was like, it's, it's like there's a, there's a deep concern that, you know, that gone through my heart, my spirit is that, uh, you know, looking and watching how far the church is to, in regards to this topic of worship, you know, and, because we are so bombarded by the religions as uh, teaching and uh, you know all those uh, type of teaching that we are and we are far away from where God wants us to be but we thank God that he is a the God of a new thing he is a God that renews his revelation every day and he brings the right people and I want to thank God and, you know I'm really thank God for the Kodapata family that that I'm, you know, we are joining in now and uh, the speakers and the teachers, you know, um, they really share to us from their hearts with what God have laid in their hearts. And all the topics that we read, you know, I want to encourage you first, please, you know, every teaching that you have heard so far, uh, don't just put it on the, on your paper, you need to meditate and plant it into your hearts to become part of your life, to become your culture this morning. Uh, and, and then we see where the, where the world is heading on now, there is nothing else will save us from where we are up to now, it, only the word of God. I want to encourage us today, you know, we have to increase our knowledge of the word of God. We have to increase that. You know, this is how we're gonna survive um, in these last days. I was talking about the uh, um, worship, the topic of worship um, yesterday, and I was finished on the five principles of worship. And I will bring you some more principles of worship. There are so many in the Bible revelation that that help us uh, prepare us and uh, you know move us into the 
an environment in which Jesus advised the lady um, from John chapter four, Jesus said to the lady, he said, lady, the time has come when the father will seek those who you know, worship him in spirit and in truth. You see our problem, the problem of the church today, you know, we are separating worship with our domestic work every day. See, that's why, you see, when we go to work, we, you know, we put worship outside our worship, excuse me, outside our office of work. That's why there are a lot of corruption in the workplace, in the government, because we put God, we put worship outside. And then when we finish work, then we come back and, 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 and worship God and or to put back the, the uh, concept of worship. What I want to share or the reason or the main purpose for this message this morning about worship is that we have to take worship around. We don't go to worship. We, we have worship in, our, in us, inside of us. That is very important for us to, to do. And, um, okay, let me begin this morning. I know that I'm not going to finish this and I'll finish it tomorrow, uh, this morning. Let me give you this first. Let me uh, share this. If you want to write, you can write it down. Um, I, early this morning, I found this while I was praying. The Lord spoke to me on this, and I want to share this first before I go down. Okay, this is the statement. Worship supposed to come through you and not to you. This is a wonderful truth that I want to begin with this morning. Worship supposed to come through you and not to you. You see, when a human being demands worship to come to you, we are no different than Lucifer himself. Amen? When we demand, when we human demand worship, we are assuming to be God. And that's a very dangerous thing that we need to understand in life. Um, let's read from Psalm chapter 96. Verse eight and nine. I love this, uh, this passage of scripture. The King David said in verse eight and nine in Psalms 96, verse eight and nine, he says, ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. In verse nine, the Bible says, worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him, all the earth. Hallelujah. This wonderful scripture, that, um, I mean, King David explained very well here what we supposed to do as human, as a kingdom citizen people who are serving the king of kings. He said in, in, in the first line, on verse 8, he said, ascribe to the Lord the glory due to his name. You know, he deserves all the glory because his name alone is different from every other name. His name alone has power. That's why he gave us his name to use only in his kingdom so that we can do great exploits, so that we can do miracles and signs and wonders. That's the reason. That's why his name alone. You know, the reason why Konopata family is so powerful now, it's not because of our platform or not because of our own name or our leader. It is because of his name is glorifying this platform. If we can continue that, I want to guarantee this morning, you know, the, the level of anointing will keep rising and rising every day. Amen? And the Bible says, bring an offering and come into his courts. Not our courts. The Bible says, into his courts. We bring an offering and come into his courts. Amen? The offering of worship. 
hallelujah, the attitude of worship, the right spirit of worship. And in verse nine, he said, worship the Lord in, in the splendor of his holiness, tremble before him, hallelujah, all the earth, praise the Lord. Listen to Exodus chapter 20. I'll try to read to you a few scriptures, passages of scripture before we go down to some very important points about worship. Exodus chapter 20, verse one and six. Verse one to six, the Bible says, and God spoke all these words. Verse two says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Hallelujah. You know, this is one thing that we need to understand while we walk with God. I, I do not know how many years you've been walking with God, how many years you've been serving the Lord. Amen. But one thing that God advising his people when he took them out of Egypt, he said, do not forget the, the God that I am the God who brought you out from Egypt. Amen. You see, most of the time, we forget what God have already done in our life. Maybe, you know, we have a lot of, we have gifts and we have talents. Or maybe we are wealthy. Or maybe God is using us in a powerful way or mighty way. Hallelujah. You see, it doesn't matter how far you go in your spiritual life. But you need to remember who brought you out from the world. Who brought you out from the slavery of the world. And in verse 3, he said, you shall have no other God before me. Hallelujah. Ooh, this is powerful. Praise the Lord. He said, I don't want any other idol or any other God between you and I. Praise the Lord. Okay. Let the gap to be the gap. To be the gap of worship. To be the space of your worship to God. And, and he, he said, you know, there shall no other God in between you and me. Praise the Lord. In verse 4, he said, you shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on earth beneath or in the waters below. Hallelujah. We have to be careful. You know, this is the moment I want to prophesy. I want to say something the Lord has laid in my heart. There are a lot of you watching. I think I prophesy these two times. And this is the second time that the Lord put in my heart. There are some of you that are watching right now. You're going to be millionaire in the future. Not that far. Before the coming of the Lord. God is going to, you know, use you to be a, his millionaire in the kingdom. And some of you is going to be wealthy. Hallelujah. Some of you, your position is going to, you're going to be surprised. Why God is taking you to another level in your workplace. Okay. Listen to this. You have to be careful. This is a warning to us. When you in that level, he said, don't make to yourself any image. He said, above the heaven, on earth, or under the water below. And he said in verse 5, you shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. Hallelujah. Punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generation of those who love me and keep my commandment. How wonderful is that? Amen. That is his promise to all of us today. Praise the Lord. If you're faithful to God, when you worship him, he's going to faithful to his promise. He's going to give it to us. Amen. He is going to fulfill his promise. So the key to be prosper or the key for the promise of God to be done in our life is in your hand and my hand this morning. Hallelujah. Okay. Let me give you, let us go straight uh, to seven reasons why we should worship. Seven reasons why we should worship. Let's put Pause a little bit. Eh? Let's just pause a little bit. I just want to share something. You know, if 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 you know that that you know the way I teach is so fast, or you don't understand uh, many in, uh, uh, of my English, 
or my accent, please just uh, don't hesitate to tell uh, Nini Chaki about that so that I can, I can adjust myself. I can adjust myself, okay? I can do it. But you know, the reason is that because I really want you to get what God wants. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Eh? Okay, let's go to seven reasons. Seven reasons why we should worship the king. Number one, the king owns the country. The king owns the country. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Psalm chapter 4, verse, uh, excuse me, Psalm chapter 24, verse 1. A well known scripture. The Bible says, uh, you know, the earth belongs to the Lord in every everything and everyone in it. Amen. So it's take us to the second point. The king owns the people. One of the reasons why we should worship God, because he owns the country, he owns the world, he created it, and the people and everything in it. Hallelujah. Number three, everything. The third reason why we should worship the king is that because everything is done at the pleasure of a king. Now I want I want you to understand very deeply this thing. I want to share. Everything is done at the pleasure of the king. The point here is everything that you that you saw on earth. Okay? Everything that you saw on earth this morning or today this afternoon or evening it was created by God for his pleasure. Amen. For the pleasure of the king this morning. Praise the Lord. So which means if anything that he created are not done for the pleasure of the king, we need to know that is not worship. Okay. Number four, worship is inherent in a kingdom. As I already said yesterday, you cannot find worship or to worship anywhere else, only in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Amen. We only can see that in the kingdom, and that is inside of you and me as a kingdom children, citizenship. Okay, number five. Worship benefits the worshiper in the kingdom. Okay, the fifth reason why we should worship the king because that worship should should benefit your life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Eh? How loving our God is. Praise the Lord. Because he demands worship so that he can bless us. He wants to bless us. But the key is we have to worship him. If we don't worship him, we are canceling one of his promise to bless us only will bless us if we worship him. And number six, the reason why we worship, because submission to the king is the key to kingdom success. Okay, number five and number six are connected together, okay? Because the reason why we have to worship him, okay? Because submission to the king is the key to success. Praise the Lord. If you need success in the kingdom, True worship is needed from our side today. Hallelujah. Number seven, understanding worship is the key to true worship. I'll have to explain a little bit on the last one. Amen. And the six, it says submission to the king is the key to success. But last one is important. In order for us to be success, we have to understand worship. Praise the Lord. We have to understand worship. That's why we have a lot of things to learn about worship. Worship is not just to come and sing and praise to God or to come and pray or read his word. There are so many other things we were not taught that is considered in true worship and, uh, uh, you know, in, in spirit and, and in truth. Worship, we need to understand. Amen. Okay, I will share to you again some principles. 
Praise the Lord. Eh? Some principles. Principles are the key. They are the way, you know, they are the way into, you know, in order for us to get the promises of God. Amen. Principle is also like a law. It is a law to follow so that we can get what we want or what is, you know, we are pursuing for. See, the God that we serve is a God of principle. He is a God of his word. Amen. That's why we have the constitution. In the constitution means the word of God is where the principle of God is. Okay. If we want to know how to get into one room of prosperity, of healing, of maturity, and other things in the kingdom, they are principle to follow. Okay. I will give you some principle again of worship this morning. Number one, the worship of the king is the expression of his citizens' gratitude. The worship of the king is the expression of his citizens' gratitude. Amen? You see, that's why we need to take worship. Hallelujah. Eh? You see, we need to take worship to our workplace. Now listen, in the kingdom, as I already said, we don't go to church to worship. We don't go to worship. We take worship all around everywhere. Praise the Lord. You see, when you take worship in your office of work, you will never cheat. You will never steal. Amen. You will never um, act a corruption action in your workplace. Why? Because you were sitting there with worship. Our work, our work is part of our worship. Amen? You see, worship of the king is the expression of his citizens' gratitude. We worship him because we want to share with him, we want to show him our gratitude, our appreciation of the king for his favor, for the privilege. 24 hours, the Bible says, he's watching us. Hallelujah. There's no other God. You know, when in the nighttime, Allah sleep, Krishna sleep, Baha'u'llah sleep, they all are in the bones. But only one God, the Bible says, he's seven eyes. He's looking around the world. He's watching David. He's watching Snyder. He's watching Randini. He's watching all the Kaunapata family. He's watching us in Fiji. In At the same time. Hallelujah. He's not sleep. He doesn't. He's not living in the time. Mm. Hallelujah. He doesn't have any day and night. Mm. Woo, hallelujah. Mm. Praise the Lord. That's why you are so privileged. We are so privileged to serve him. He never sleep or slumber. Watching you. Amen. Protecting you. And to meet your needs and my needs this morning. 24-7. Hallelujah. Number two. Worship is indicating of the perceived worth of the king to the citizen. This is an indication, amen, of the worth of the king. Praise the Lord. You see, listen very carefully. I'm going to share to you a very powerful and heavy statement here. You know, how you worship him, it indicates how worthful your king is. Are you getting me? Eh? I'll say that again. <laughs> How you worship him. See, your worship is an indication. It's an indication for, for him and for everyone on how worth our king is. Hallelujah. Okay? How you pray, how you do your work, how you know, how you, how you preach and teach, how you sing, how you worship him, that's an indication. If I will come in the house where we're praising and worship, if you are standing still and never into what is going on, you are just indicating that the God you serve is just a God that just going in and out and doesn't care of anything about you. Am I right or wrong? 
okay? When you come to worship and give your whole heart, your spirit, your soul and body, when you pray, you really pray from your heart. When you read your Bible, you really go deep into the word of God. When you sing and praise to him, you give your total hearts to him. You are indicating the God, the worth of your God. Hallelujah. Eh? If you could imagine that he is watching you, he never slumber or sleep, watching you day and night. When you sleep and doing other things, he keep on watching you. That's how worthyful he is to you. Hallelujah. When you're driving on the road, there's a car coming from the other side. Maybe the devil assigned the car to bomb you and to kill you. But the God we serve, the worth of the God we serve, he don't allow that. Hallelujah. To save his children on the road everywhere. That's how worthyful our God is. Amen. And number three, worship is a response of the citizens to aware that all things and joys are at the pleasure of the king. Hallelujah. It's the same as number two. It's our response. Okay? Worship is our response to the Lord. It's an, it's an enjoyable thing to do. Hallelujah. Because how enjoyable we are. That is how the pleasure of your king. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Number four, worship is the acknowledgement by the citizen that all things belong to the king. Amen. If everything belongs to the king, even the shirt and the dress that we wear, hallelujah, the money that we receive every day, the house that I own, the car that I drove, that I'm driving right now, everything that the children that I have, my husband and my wife, if only I know that it belongs to God, hallelujah, praise the Lord. I should praise him every day, all day. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter my age. If I am so old, if I'm 90 or 19 or 9, I will just, I'm acknowledging because I acknowledge him that everything belongs to him. I'm going to pour out my spirit, my soul and body for him and to him alone. Number five, worship is an expression of dependency on the king for the substance of his kingdom or for the wealth in his kingdom. Worship is the expression, expression of dependency on the king. You know, this is a sign. When we worship God, it's a sign that we're telling God my whole life, my whole family, hallelujah, we depend on you. Amen. See, the biggest problem that we a believer that we always do every day, you know, we don't allow God to be the ruler and, the, uh, you know, that we depend on him. We don't, anything that we did or we do it every day or maybe some other days, we are not expressing that we depend on him. Amen. So worship is the expression of dependency of the king. Praise the Lord. Okay. Hallelujah. I, I want to show us another problem again. See, it will always be good to bring the substitute or the opposition of king. Amen. This is there is no other opposition of the kingdom mandate or the kingdom concept rather than democracy. It is democracy. See the problem of democracy. Let's meet that little bit before I am going down deeper. Amen. Problem of democracy is this. I know that we already know the principle 
and why we should worship. Now let's turn to the other side and see the negative side of it. The problem of democracy is in democracy, we train to depend on people. Okay, we are trained in democracy to depend on people. That's why democracy is built on the concept of individualism. Democracy is built on individualism. Amen. Uh, it built on this concept of independence. Independence. Okay, I'll say that again. I will go there very, very, very slowly here. I'll go back. We train in democracy, we train to depend on people. And that's why democracy is built on this concept of individualism. Okay, which, 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 which comes the word independence. Democracy is built on the foundation of independence. Okay, and if you listen to this word, you can go and search. Because see, it takes the power back from God to man. Amen. Demo means power. Sorry, demo means people. Kertos or kersi means power. So democracy is a system and the concept that built on people dependency or individualism or people. Amen. It builds on independence. You see, now listen carefully. If we go back to the beginning, the first independent flag was raised in the Garden of Eden. The first independent individualism depend on people was raised up. That flag was raised up in the Garden of Eden. This is when Adam declared independency and democracy for himself than God. When Adam and Eve disobey the King of Kings, when they were told to follow the principle of the law of the garden, not to eat from the, from the fruit in the middle of the garden. When Eve touches the fruit, ate it and give it to Adam, when they ate it, hallelujah. It is the sign and the picture of Adam and Eve are first raised up the first independent flags that they want to say to God Almighty, we are separate from you. We don't need you anymore. We are not depending to you anymore. We are going on our own today. Hallelujah. You see, in the kingdom of God, independent is a dangerous word. Amen. But this is a concept and the system in democracy. If we don't aware this concept of independence. It's affecting the church today. It's going to affect your life and my life. And the moment will come to the point we will say, God, I don't need your protection. I don't need, I now got a lot of money. I have family, they're helping me. You know, and my job is a good job, is giving me a lot of money. And you are. Today, I'm not going to pray this morning. Uh, I don't need to pray. Hallelujah. I'll just stand up and go rest to work. I don't care if I pray or not because everything is here. You know what you are doing? You are raising your flag up to say, "I'm today, Lord, I'm going to independence. I'll depend on my own. Hallelujah. You see, in the kingdom, the father is the king. We talk about worship today, okay? So the lower you get before him, the king, the more he becomes responsible for you. Praise the Lord. In democracy, if your hand is weak, you are going to die. You will never survive. That's why the concept of individualism and own dependency, you know, just depend to yourself. If you don't, if you don't work hard, it will kill you. 
that is in democracy. But in the kingdom, the lower you get before him, the more he becomes responsible to you. Amen? So that's why the safest place to be is in the kingdom of God. Do not raise up a flag of independence. I remember 23 years back when Fiji was ceded to the Great Britain in 1970, at that time I was three years old, when our, our forefathers, the, the founder of this country, they raised up the flag to the Great Britain to say that we are independent, we can run by our own. And don't, we should not do it here in the kingdom of God. I almost finished this morning. I'll just finish with this. What is worship? I will share to you again some more reason or some more explanation of worship. Okay? Number one, worship means worship. I love this. You need to write it down. Worship means worship. Another meaning, worship means to esteem with worth, to honor, to place highest value on, to bow down, means to bend yourself to something. That's worship. So when we say that we worship God, He only God in the, is in the highest place, and we have to bow down to Him. To bend down to him. Is this another? I don't know if you heard this meaning or not of worship. Worship means to throw kish. Amen. Or blow kiss, to throw kiss. That's worship. To acknowledge in all things. Another meaning is to prostrate, to mingle, to surrender. Hallelujah. To him, to ascribe credit of all things. I will finish with this scriptures. Exodus chapter 20 that supports the meaning of worship. Exodus chapter 20 verse 5. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I the Lord, your God, am jealous God. Visiting the iniquity of the father's on the children to the third and the fourth generation to those who hate me. Oh, so the enemy of God are those who don't want to worship him. When you don't want to worship him, you are hating God. And God said, I'm going to come down and search for your iniquity. And not only you will suffer, our children's children and our descendant will suffer from the to fourth generation. New Testament, Philippians chapter two, verse 10. The Bible says, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in the heaven and on earth and under the earth. Every knee shall bow. So God demands every knee on earth. If you are Muslim, if you are a Christian, if you are a citizen kingdom, uh, citizen people, if you are a every believer on earth, you need to bow down to him. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14. Ephesians 3, 14. For this reason, I bow, I bow my knees before the Father. Leviticus 26, 1. You shall not make idols for yourself or erect an image or pillars that you shall not set up a figure stone in your land to bow down to it, for I am the Lord, your God. Let me encourage you today. Uh, I want to share something to you. Maybe some of you will disagree with this, but let me just share with you. According to this, I know in Fiji there are a lot of people and a lot of people in our church was doing it and I advise them with this scripture because it's dangerous when we don't understand it. Jesus said, you shall not make an idol for yourself or erect an image or pillar that you shall not set up 
figured stone in your land to bow down to it, O I, the Lord, your God. Okay, image is very important. Okay, and Christians is making a lot of image. And I want to advise you with this. Sometimes you put in phones. Okay, okay, listen. I don't know how to explain it, but let me just explain it and you talk about it. There are some pictures and a lot of people say it's a picture of Jesus or a picture of Mary carry, carry a child called Jesus. I want, you know, maybe I will share to you the next time is the truth about it. But if there is in your house, please, I, because every time we saw the picture, we, in our mind, we say, that is Jesus. The same time when we call the picture is Jesus. Now, at the same time, something came into our heart to worship that picture. Okay. If you are here a Catholic, I don't want to be, you know, Go up to God and said, "Why don't you say this?" Mm -hmm. I don't. I'm. I'm. I don't want to. Uh, I think Radini will explain it very um, clearly you to you. You are free, sir. You are free to explain anything. <laughs> That's why we are here. We we don't have to uh, sugarcoat the truth. We just have to say. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. You, you see, it, because most of the time we treasure that sometimes the cross, I'm not saying that is, you know, but those are things that are dangerous in our walk with God. Amen. And most of the time when we saw the picture, it drives our spirit to say that, oh, wow, Jesus, oh, that's Mary and, and little Jesus. I want to tell you today, you know, those are things that you are accountable with. Leviticus 26.1, shall not make it. it. It can become an idol to us, an image that God said, don't make any idol or image between you and I to serve or to bow down with today. Amen. Exodus chapter 23, verse 24, you shall not bow down to their God nor serve them, nor do as they do, but, but you shall utterly overthrow them and break their pillars in pieces. Hallelujah. See, this is how powerful it is. Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 9, you shall not bow down to them or serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of your father, or the children, third to the fourth generation. Genesis 27, 29, the Bible says, let people serve you and nation bow down to you. Be Lord over your brothers and you may your mother's sons bow down to you. Curse be everyone who curse you and bless everyone who bless you. This is the God that we serve. Before I finish today, I want you Kingdom cities, precious kingdom citizen people who are listening this morning, including myself and those who are around here, we need to worship God. Worship God is not just going to church. What I'm sharing today, worship God, you are going around worship. You take worship around everywhere you go. Amen. When we have the sense of worship that we are taking worship around, what is happening is that. You know, you have a conscience of, of God living with you in everything that you do. Amen. If somebody watching you or not, God is watching you. That's how important it is. I always share some point, this uh, statement from Polangas. I always say to them this, you know, when, you, when everyone is not watching, God is watching. When God is watching, when everyone is not watching you. Amen. See, most of the time, 
we act that we serve that this God when people are watching us. But in our secret place, this is the very moment that God always qualifies people and always watching us so dearly. Amen. To see if we are serving him in spirit or in truth or not. Hallelujah. That be this challenge to you this morning. Tomorrow, if it is right, I will take us to the praise and worship. It'll be interesting. Thank you so much. May God bless you.